seated and enjoy this wedding service together with us. I need to tell you what my orders are. My orders from the wedding planner are make this one snappy. The rain is close. But I also want to tell you what we're going to do. The decision has been made that if it's a light rain, we stay here. If it gets heavier, we go that direction up here and, and we'll finish the job up there. But we're going to start. Anna, I remember when your parents got married. And I remember whenever they had you, and I thought, what a beautiful name. So I looked it up. It's a biblical name, and it means grace and favor. And Kyle, I hope you appreciate grace and favor in your life. I met this couple around Christmas, and they asked me to marry them. They asked me to do the service today, 
And then I got sick. And I'm still being, I'm still getting chemo treatments at Bob Chase Hospital, so I'm a little on the weak side today. And I think that threw a little scare into everybody, but I think, think I can make it through this wedding. So, I want you to hear these words. I said last night that the service that they've selected is a very traditional service. It begins with the words, Dearly Beloved. Dearly Beloved, we're gathered here in the presence of God and the company of witnesses to join together this woman and this man in holy matrimony. Of all the institutions on earth that have within them possibilities for good, none is more important than the home. That's what you're doing today. You're establishing a home. Marriage was sanctified by God. It was honored by Christ. In fact, the first social occasion we ever have record of Jesus attending is a wedding. So it's inspected by Christ and it should be honored by God's people wherever they are. Marriage is also sacred. It needs to be entered into reverently, discreetly, and in the fear of God. Into this holy estate today, Hannah Faith Elizabeth Seitz. First time I've ever married a bride with four names. And Kyle Stephen Schoen come now to be joined. Now before we go further, we've gathered here and we want to ask that God be part of what we do here today. I said last night that a wedding is both civil and spiritual. So we'd like to pray together. Would you join us? Eternal God, we look to you in thanksgiving for the joy, the beauty, and the sacredness of this hour. We thank you for your love, which surrounds all of our days and especially for the way it comes now to focus in the hearts of Kyle and Hannah. Give the gift of your Holy Spirit to the celebration of this marriage and grace the service today with joy, grace it with sacredness. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. You know, Kyle and Hannah, never easy to express how you feel, the deep things that are within us. But your relationship grew because you and spoke to each other, you shared with one another, you dared to reveal who you are back and forth to each other. I used the word vulnerable when we were meeting. We met in April and May. You made yourselves vulnerable. And that is to say as a man and a woman, I would urge you to commit yourselves to today as a husband and a wife. A love relationship lives and grows on honest expression with one another. And I hope you remember what I said. I'm not going to repeat what I said when we were counseling. Love should never be taken for granted, ever. It's a privilege of those who've been attracted to each other by that power called love to found a home for the nurture and for the expression of that love. Where honest sharing occurs, a home can be a haven of joy, a comfortable and a secure refuge from the storms of life, the place of togetherness where the spirit of each of you could be renewed and uplifted for the daily work of life. A home is a place where the two of you can work together with God in the creative processes. It's a place where as a husband and a wife, you must seek each day to affirm your respect, your love, and your devotion to each other. The New Testament speaks about love this way. You might remember this because I use it each time. I don't think I've ever done a wedding. But I haven't used this little cup. Here's what it says in 1 Corinthians. Now, could you hold it? Thank you. If I have the gift of being able to speak in other languages without learning them, and could speak in every language there is in all of heaven and earth, but didn't love others, I would only be making noise. If I gave everything I have to poor people who are burned alive, preaching the gospel, and didn't love others would be of no good whatsoever. Love is very patient and kind. It's never jealous, or envious, never boastful or proud, never haughty or selfish or rude. Love doesn't demand its own way, it does not hold grudges, it's not irritable or touchy, and will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. It is never glad about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. And this next verse, I think, is one I make special emphasis about. If you love someone, if you love someone, you'll be loyal to him, her, no matter what the cost. You always believe in him or her. You always expect the best of him or her, and you will always 
stand your ground in defending him or her. That chapter ends this way. It says there are three things that remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. I think I asked you why you wanted to marry Kyle. I think I asked you why you wanted to marry Hannah. And I remember your answer because you said you're in love. Love is a wonderful thing. May God's word bless our hearts. You know, Hannah and Kyle, you know what love is today. But you don't, I don't think anybody that ever stands here ever knows all that love can be. It reminds me of a rose opening up. But a rose, my rose is at home get old and they fade away. I look at love like a rose that never quits expanding and blooming. It's a media thing, never complete. It's a gift that has to be nurtured every day with honest labor. Love is work, and love is risk. But in the work and risk, there's a deep joy and growth and a sense of peace and fulfillment. Kyle, having heard these words of instruction, will you have Hannah to be your wedded wife? Will you love her? you comfort her? Will you honor and keep her in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, will you be faithful only unto her, as long as you both shall live? Count at your intention. Would you look at your bride and say nice and loud, I will. I will. Hannah, will you have Kyle to be your wedded husband? Will you love him? Will you comfort him? Will you honor and keep him in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, will you be faithful only unto him, so long as you both shall live. Hand up at your intention, say it nice and loud, I will. I will. A couple is really blessed, really blessed, and they have the blessings of family. That's who you all are gathered around here today. But I'd like to know who has the honor of giving this woman to be married to this man. Kyle and Hannah have just made each other a promise. And I always make a big deal about this, but the promise is horizontal. It goes this way. But now I'm going to ask them to join their hands and repeat their vows. Vows also go horizontally, but they also go vertically. Kyle, your vows come first. If you just repeat after me, according to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. I, Kyle, take you, Hannah. I, Kyle, take you, Hannah. Be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. And there too. And there, and there too. I pledge you my trust. I pledge you my trust. Anna, your vows. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. I, Hannah, take you, Kyle. I, Hannah, take you, Kyle. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poor. For richer or for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. And there too. And there too. I pledge you my trust. I pledge you my trust. You know, Kyle, you've just spoken what I consider to be holy wedding vows. What symbol do you bring today that you'll be faithful to the words you've just said? A ring. And Hannah, I'm going to ask you the same question. 
What symbol do you bring that you'll be faithful to the words you've just spoken? A ring. I said last night that I grew up in a church and nobody wore that. Nobody even wore that. And so rings were unfamiliar to me until I got into the work world. And I realized that when somebody had that on their finger, that meant something. They belonged to somebody. And I was very, very thankful because it is a constant daily reminder of what has happened here on June the 19th. And I've been thankful ever since. I don't know, the audience can't see what these rings look like, but they're beautiful. But they didn't come out of the ground this way. Somebody molded them, shaped them, polished them, made them nice. And I pray that they would be just like your love. Beautiful today, more beautiful tomorrow. I'd like to ask God's blessings on the rings. The one who gives, the one who receives. And then have the ring service. Shall we pray together? Heavenly Father, would you take these two pieces of jewelry I have on my finger? Would you bless them? Bless the giver, bless the, the one who receives. And I pray that they would be just as a daily reminder of what drew them together, what keeps them together, and what will take them into the future. I pray that they might be proud to wear these wedding rings, pleased to wear them, and they might signify a spiritual and a civil part, and they might be this one heart. And when they, Cal looks at his ring and Hannah looks at hers, she might remember this day with great joy. So thank you for the rings. Bless them, Lord. I pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Anna, would you extend your ring finger, please? And Kyle, would you say these words as you slide that ring on your bride's finger? With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. Kyle, would you extend your ring finger, please? And Hannah, would you say these words as you slide that ring on your groom's finger? With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. As much as you, Kyle, and you, Hannah, have consented together in holy wedlock, that's what you've done. You've witnessed the same before God, whose presence we ask. You witnessed that by the joining of your hands, giving and receiving of rings, and the exchanging of your holy wedding vows. Now, therefore, by the authority vested in me as a minister of the gospel, and under the laws of the Commonwealth of the state of Pennsylvania, I declare you husband and wife. I declare you husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I would command you and everybody who listens that whom God joins together, let no man ever put forth. Amen. Something special happens on a wedding day. I told them last night, I'll tell you today, I used to preach a little sermon called One Plus One Equals One. Two people, two hearts come together, march out of here together, spend the rest of their lives together. 54 years ago, almost today, a couple more days, 54 years ago, I did the same thing you're doing today. 54 years ago, I can't believe it, but I did. But anyway, sometimes we have symbolism. The rings are symbols. Other things are symbols in a wedding. The flowers, the beauty, a whole bunch of things. But Hannah, and Kyle want to show you what has happened up here. We want to do a unity service with a rope. Worship and watch as you watch this service happen today.
Let's pray again. Could we do that together? God of all love and grace, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, I pray today that you bestow upon Hannah and Kyle the seal of your approval and the strength, Lord, of your gracious blessing. Grant unto them grace to fulfill with a pure and a steadfast devotion the solemn vows that they've made between themselves and you. Give them a clear vision of your purposes and a portion of your spirit, that they may live together with one heart and one mind in a strong human love. Grant them to grow in reverence for each other and for you. Send upon their home, Lord, friend, quality and peace. If they have children, Lord, I ask that Kyle could be a good dad, and Hannah would be a good mom, and they'd raise their children and uh, give them grace to raise their children in godliness and Christian character. God, guide their steps. Protect them through all danger. Allow them to be with each other in health and joy, and use them for your glory and for their neighbor's good. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Now, Hannah and Kyle, I need to bless you. I'm never sure how that works. You say the words, but hope that God hears and does what you ask him to do. I want to ask that the Lord would bless you, that the Lord would keep you, that the Lord would make his face to shine on you, the Lord of the universe would lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. I pray he'll do that for you, Kyle. I pray he'll do that for you, Hannah. Introduce Pennsylvania's most newly married couple. You know, when I think about it, history is standing right before you. I'll bet you there isn't anybody in Pennsylvania more recently married than this couple right here. And here's the way they want to be introduced. Here is a brand new Mr. and Mrs. Schoen. Woo!